Today, I'll share a few things about the Merge Shapes tool you didn't know about. Whether you are a beginner or an intermediate user of PowerPoint, you will find some of the points quite interesting. First off, where do you find this Merge Shapes tool? You won't find it in the default PowerPoint ribbon because it is a contextual tool. When you select two shapes, then go to Shape Format, you will find this Merge Shapes option. And there are quite a few interesting tools available under this drop-down menu. I'm sure you already have used these tools before, but let us explore some of the aspects of these tools that you may not have thought about. The first point is the sequence in which you select matters. I'm sure you already know about this when it comes to shape subtract. You select an object, then hold the shift button and select the second object and then use shape subtract option and you retain a part of the first element. But there is one other aspect why the sequence of selection matters. Let me show you. Let me make a duplicate of this by pressing Ctrl D and keep it over here. The point I want to make is when you use shape union to merge two shapes, then the property of the first object you select is applied over the shape union. Let me show you what I mean. Let us select this first. Whenever you select any object, by the way, it is called as the base shape. So you select that and then hold the shift button and select the second object. Remember, I selected the teal one first. Now let me go to shape union. You see that the teal color is applied to both of them. Now let us select the orange one first, hold the shift button, select the teal one next and then use shape union. You can see that the orange color is applied to both of them. So the property of the first object or the base object gets applied to the entire selection. Now, this is true whether it is shape union, combined shapes or fragment shapes. Let me show you. For example, let us select this teal first, hold the shift button and select the orange. Now, let me apply shape combine. See this, the property of the first selection is applied for both the shapes. Let me press Ctrl Z. Let me select this orange first and then the teal next and go to shape fragment and see that the orange color is applied to all the other shapes. So this is the first thing I want you to remember. Now you might ask me, what is the application for something like this? Let us say I fill this with a picture. Let us go to insert picture and let me take some stock image. It doesn't really matter. Let us select this and say insert. Now one part of the image, which is the circle has an image fill. Now if I select the picture first, hold the shift button down and select the shape next and then use shape union, observe what happens. PowerPoint now merges both the shapes and then inserts the image onto the new shape as if it is the original shape. Now, let us see the other way around. Let us select this shape first and then hold the shift button and select the picture next and then use shape union. You see that it fills with just the shape color. So that is the difference. This specific property has a lot of implications when you work with merge shapes tools. The next point is whenever you merge two shapes, Make sure that you nudge before you merge. Let me show you what I mean by this. There are two circles here with white outline. Let me select both the shapes. This time I'm going to use shape fragment. Now you see that there are three fragments here. Now when I apply shape union, you expect that everything would get merged seamlessly, right? Let me see what happens. Did you see this? The merging is not seamless and that is because of one simple reason. Let me show you what happens under the hood. Now, these are the two shapes that I fragmented. Let me go to shape outline and say no outline. Now, notice this portion here. Can you see that the objects are not actually overlapping, but they are placed next to each other? Now, unless you nudge these pieces together by using your arrow key on the keyboard, you would not be able to merge them together seamlessly. Now, when I select all the shapes and use shape union, you can see that the merge is seamless. When I go to shape outline and use some color, you can see that there is no overlap between these elements. So whenever you merge shapes, make sure that the objects are overlapping even by at least one pixel for this merging to work seamlessly. The next point to note is it is possible to change the orientation of the shape by using merge shapes option. This is a very interesting aspect that nobody talks about. Before I tell you what that is, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. If you want to receive 25 creative presentation ideas to upgrade your presentations, then join this five day free email course you see in the description box below. The ideas are definitely worth noting. Now let's get back. 
Let's insert a shape. This time I'm going to use rectangles and use the second one called as rectangle rounded corners. Hold the shift button down and draw a squarish kind of a shape with rounded corners. Now let me fill this shape with a picture. So select the picture and go to insert picture. Now this is the one that we have already inserted and therefore it is there in the clipboard. So I'm just going to use the same thing. Now, instead of having the shape oriented like this, I want this to be rotated by 45 degrees and then fill the picture. Let me show you what I mean by this. Let me fill this back with shape fill. Now, right click, go to size and position and then rotate this by 45 degrees and hit enter. So this is how I want the shape to be. Now, when I insert a picture, what happens? Let us select this, go to insert picture. Can you see that the picture is now oriented in a different angle and that is because you can see this rotation handle it is in a cross direction and therefore you will not be able to use this shape the way it is right now. Now how do I make sure that even though my shape is rotated when I insert a picture it still needs to be in the right orientation. It's very simple. Let me select this. Go back to shape fill. It doesn't really matter whether you fill it with shape color. I'm just doing this so you can understand this. Now you select any shape. It doesn't really matter which shape it is. Let me select maybe this right triangle and then draw the shape inside this object completely. No part of this new shape should be out of this. Now you select both the objects. It doesn't really matter which of the objects you select first and then you use shape combine. Now observe where this rotation handle is as I do this operation. I merge the shapes using union shapes. Instantly the rotation handle moves from here to here and that indicates that the orientation has changed. Now when I insert a picture onto this you can see that the orientation is proper. So whenever you want to change the direction of any shape and you still want the orientation to retain you add some shape inside the original shape and then merge them together then the orientation changes. Now the next point is you can convert text into shapes using shape subtract or shape intersect option. There are tons of uses for this simple trick. Let me explain. By the way, I hope you are enjoying what you are watching now. If so, please show that by hitting the like button right away. Now let me insert some text here. I'm going to make this really large, maybe around 96 and then change the font type to be something bold so we can clearly observe what we got here. Now, as you know, obviously this is a text element, which means that whenever you want to scale this, you cannot scale it using the usual method of scaling a shape, which is by holding the shift button and then clicking and dragging from the corner because it only expands the box, but doesn't expand the text. If you need to increase the size of the text, then you need to go to font size and then increase the size. That can be quite inconvenient, especially when you're working with complex designs where you want everything to be scaling properly, uniformly together. So in such a situation, it makes sense to convert this text into a shape so you can scale it properly. How do you do that? It's very simple. You insert any shape. The only condition is the shape has to be much larger than the text that you have selected. Can you see the shape that I've selected here completely engulfs the text element. Now let me right click and send this to back. You can select both the elements and then use the option here called shape intersect. You can see now this may not seem like there is any difference, but then this is now a shape. How do you know that? When you hold the shift button and then click and drag, you can see that it scales seamlessly. Now, the interesting thing is, even if I use word art, this thing works beautifully. Let us insert word art by going to word art option. And maybe I can use this called fill aqua accent color five. And let us write something here. Let us say text. And now let me do the exact same thing that I did earlier. Let me select a shape and then make it completely engulf it. Now I'm going to select the text first and then select the shape next and then use shape intersect. Now you can see that it has retained all the original qualities of the actual word art, but this is a shape and therefore you can work with word art in a seamless fashion and get all the advantages of using a shape by using this technique. The next point is you can almost merge any two items on your slide. The reason why I used almost is it doesn't work completely, but it works almost 90% of the time when it comes to any kind of items that you have on your slide. For example, we all know you can combine any two shapes. I've also shown you that it is possible for you to combine a picture and a shape and you can combine text and a shape. 
Now, the best part is you can even combine a video with a shape. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let us go to insert video and let us pick a stock video. Let me select something random and I'm going to place this inside this. Let me reduce the size like so. Now I'm going to write some text and subtract that from this video. Let me select the text box and let us write text here and increase the size like we did earlier and change the font type. And let me place this over here. Now I select the video first and therefore this becomes a base shape. And then I select the text next and then I use shape subtract option. Now you see that I have subtracted the text shape from this video. Now how do you know that? Let me change the background color by going to format background and change the background color to blue. You can see that the blue color is shown through and that is because that is the color of the slide background. Now this opens up a whole bunch of opportunities. You can play a video with your text punched out and you can have another video running at the back to give a very interesting effect for your text element. The same way you can have a picture with a punched out text element and you can have a video playing beneath it so you can have a different effect. So there are some very creative opportunities possible when you can combine a video with a text element or a video with a shape. Very few people know that it is possible for you to combine two text elements as well. You can see that this is a text and this is another text element. They both are differentiated by the different font type. Now I have placed one element on top of the other like so. Now let us select both of them and I can use shape union. Now both of them behave as one object. The same way I can have two videos combined if I want. Let me select both of them. The only thing here and this is where the almost element comes when it comes to this particular sentence and that is you can only subtract elements. I can select the first one, hold the shift button and select the second video. By the way, both are videos in case you didn't notice. So you can see that this is a video and this is a video. I can select the first one, hold the shift button and select the second one and then use shape subtract and you can see that that portion is punched out. Whereas I cannot combine both of them and can have a new video created with this kind of an orientation. Let us see what happens when I combine everything. You can see that the second one disappears. So you can subtract one video from the other and pretty much that is it. Now this reminds me of a very interesting thing. You can use shape intersect in ways that you have not even imagined. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me delete these elements. Here I have two PNG images. Let us say I want to extract just this circular portion which is the shape of the earth from this PNG image. I can do so using shape intersect option. How do I do that? Let me insert a circle. Now I have increased the transparency of the circle a little bit so you can clearly see that there is this object behind it. This also helps me to make sure that my object is placed exactly the way it is and the dimensions match. Now once it is done, I can select the picture underneath as the first one. Hold the shift button and then select this second object which is just the shape and then say shape intersect and you can see that I have extracted just this from the actual shape and this can be quite handy even in other ways. For example, I have this picture here which is a PNG image. I can go to shapes and I can use this one called as freeform scribble and I can just scribble some portion out. For example, I want to take this mountain range and then I want to remove this cloud from this image. I can do so. Now I'm going to draw this whole thing. I'm doing it very roughly. You understand the point I'm trying to make here. I'm going to select this picture first, hold the shift button and then select this image. I can go to shape subtract option and you can see that I've extracted just these mountains from the picture. So with creative application of shape intersect and shape subtract, you can extract images and you can do some very interesting design work with very little effort. Now, while we are at this, I want to talk about some weird aspects about this merge shapes tool. Before I tell you that, I want to talk about this useful product called Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery 2.0. The link to this product is in the description box below. This product has 42 courses on PowerPoint that make you a master in PowerPoint. Whatever you want to know about PowerPoint from basic till very advanced, you will find that in this program. The program is affordably priced as well. So click on the link in the description box below the video and check out this product, watch this video and see if this can be a fit for you to improve your career. Now coming back, talking about the weird aspects of the Merge Shapes tool. Here I have two shapes. Can you see here? These two are the two shapes. Let me select both the shapes. 
and then use shape combine you can see that i am not able to do so because none of these options are available and that is because none of the merge shapes tools work when the shapes are grouped i can see a lot of cases where i work with grouped objects and still want to use this merge shapes option unfortunately i can't do so so i am forced to ungroup the objects before i can apply this merge shapes option and therefore many times i tend to lose the animations applied earlier and all that so please remember this very important thing that is you cannot use merge shapes tools when the objects are grouped now the next point is the level of overlap determines shape combine i think this is better explained with an example let us go to shapes pick up the oval tool and draw an oval like this let us change the color for distinction and then let us insert another circle and place this somewhere in the center let us select the first one hold the shift button and select the second one and use shape subtract this is what happens now let us select the first one hold the second one and then use shape combine you can see that even shape combine works exactly as shape subtract so when two elements are one inside the other shape combine works the same as shape subtract now let us see what happens when i have this slightly outside the initial one that there is only just an overlap i select both of them and use shape combine this is what happens and then of course when i select this and select this and use shape subtract this is what happens so shape subtract and shape combine work the same when there is an overlap the next point is when fragmented shapes are combined sometimes they unite now the operating word is sometimes and you never know when is that time for example let us take this i have taken two shapes and these are fragmented now i select all of them let us use shape fragment option when i do that you can see that it has actually worked as shape union i don't know why this happens sometimes these kind of weird behaviors are seen when it comes to merge shapes tools i highly recommend that you do your own bit of experimentation and learn about some of these idiosyncrasies of this useful but sometimes weird tool if you liked this tutorial then you will really love this other tutorial that we have created called all about powerpoint slide master basic to advanced here i talk about some of the aspects of slide master that you may not have known even if you are an advanced user of powerpoint so i highly recommend that you click on the link that you see right now on your screen and watch that video next and improve your powerpoint skills i'll see you inside that video next